Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European R markets uh, mid uh, mid afternoon update. Okay, in terms of uh, Asian markets overnight, um, the uh, Nikkei obviously was the one that was active. Certainly finished negative uh, with regards to talk regarding the uh, sales tax hike. Certainly active. Uh, got obviously uh, there was uh, or there were rumours that uh, a potential delay in that tax hike and obviously uh, elections being called for, etc. But for now, it seems that the tax hike is certainly going ahead, and it generally indicated risk aversion. That certainly fell. That certainly fed through into the European markets today. Although we have recovered somewhat, okay. Now, in terms of uh, oil, the oil markets on Friday, obviously, we know with regards to the Saudi news that certainly hurt the market. Uh, the markets have short squeezed uh, subsequently on the back on the basis that the Russians have actually got involved and have stated that the um, the Saudis and the Iranians are both on board now. Once the Iranians reach four million barrels per day, that certainly did help oil to a to a short, small short squeeze. Although it has given that back in Brent uh, immediately. And uh, whether or not it will be sustained is, is another uh, question altogether, given the fact that the uh, the Saudis, and there's an article here with regards to the FT, uh, the Saudis, I mean, if Saudi Arabia acts to slow Iran, Iran's oil export, Saudi Arabia has taken steps to slow Iran's efforts at increasing oil production, uh, banning vessels that uh, transport Iranian crude from entering their waters, according to traders and shipbrokers. Iran already faces insurance, financing and legal obstacles despite the lifting of sanctions linked to the oil industry so the saudis are actively trying to curb the exports from iran and really it's a proxy war in yemen as we already know that's already ongoing and certainly the situation is getting worse as opposed to better and that certainly isn't good news at all okay that's my understanding or interpretation thus far okay so looking for a risk aversion trade there whether or not that helps oil prices it certainly hasn't uh, theoretically it should if the iranians and the uh, saudis are at war with one another uh, but that obviously hasn't been the case because of the excess uh, oil supply that needs to uh, hit the market. And the fear of that alone is obviously hurting the uh, the markets uh, with regards to that. So bear that in mind, okay? Right. In terms of uh, economic data this morning, let's have a look. Uh, we had the uh, uh, inflation data uh, come out weak in uh, Australia. So that certainly sent the Aussie down. Although job adverts and building permits were certainly good. Okay, in terms of uh, employment change, we had weaker uh, bearish employment data out of, France, out of the um, uh, Spain uh, unemployment uh, to a lot, well, slightly better, but not as good as everybody expected. We had uh, PMI construction slightly stronger in the UK, but still not as good as everybody expected. Okay, uh, we had Centix investor confidence in the EU certainly come out weaker. Uh, the unemployment data certainly came out in line, and PPI, or should we say inflation gauge, certainly came out worse than expected but that hasn't stopped the euro from um, uh, uh, obviously uh, remaining above the 1.14 level on the back of obviously monetary divergence given the fact that Draghi has said that he's done with cutting rates now it's only QE that can actually send this currency lower and whether or not that will be sustained is a different question altogether what's even worse is that the, uh, the US have obviously uh, uh, stated that they are uh, remaining dovishly hawkish which is very strange and uh, Miss Yellen certainly seems to be uh, uh, divorcing herself from her peers in the fact that she is overtly and uh, extremely um, uh, dovish with regards to uh, her uh, policy going forward with regards to raising rates. It seems like no rates will be raised at all and that obviously is hurting the, uh, well, sending the euro higher and obviously the Aussie and the Kiwi should certainly benefit from that as well and based on monetary policy divergence. So overall that's the situation, that's the scenario this, this morning and really it's all about oil, oil, oil. Oil certainly seems to be dictating everything at present, okay? So bear that in mind. Okay, now in terms of the uh, markets, let's have a look at the uh, technicals now. Be sure to visit tradesignal.com, folks. Uh, the uh, new app by uh, CFDs.com. My analysis is posted on there uh, daily. Okay, in terms of uh, the technicals, folks, let's just quickly go over the euro stocks first of all. Uh, as you can see, we had this bounce. If I go to the daily chart, I'll be able to elaborate and explain in more detail. Uh, the market obviously has sold off. We are aware of the HNS formation. I've deleted that from my chart from for now. But bear in mind there is a HNS formation, okay? So that formation certainly needs to be watched whether or not that follows through, okay? Uh, given the fact that the pivot high is um, 3130 and the neckline is at uh, 2980, you have a 50 point drop, okay? So you're looking at two, um, 2930 as a potential target. We've hit a pivot low of 2916. So one can argue uh, 2980, 31, sorry, 3120. Do apologize, okay? 
So you're looking at 150 point drop. Sorry. Okay. So so from 2980, you're looking at 2830 target and the downside on the basis that the euro remains above 1.14, and that obviously is still the case. So bear that in mind. Okay. That is still the case. Okay. Uh, with regards to that. Okay. So certainly uh, take that into consideration, folks. Okay. Now. Uh, the euro uh, euro stock certainly has potential support at that 2930 zone previous resistance equals support 60 minute chart we obviously did bounce off the pivot low at 2920 which is pretty impressive okay uh, whether or not we can sustain that is another question we do have this inverted head and shoulders formation uh, which uh, we have a potential uh, gap fill target 3000 so certainly bear that in mind and we are potentially retesting the neckline as we speak now bear with me one second because i do have a trade active at present one second Okay, continuing on with the uh, the actual recording, hopefully. Okay, so continuing on with the recording with regards to the uh, European markets. Okay, so Euro stocks again. Um, whilst I've been talking, obviously we've bounced now. Uh, I actually took in my trade at 2960 in the live analysis service and the retest of this inverted head and shoulders formation. Hence the reason why I've closed my bias, uh, or chained my bias. I've actually closed my shorts on the uh, S&P 500 as well. Okay, so uh, that's the situation we find ourselves in with regards to the... Uh, Euro stocks uh, certainly uh, retest that inverted head and shoulders formation. Let's bring up the chart of the German DAX now. Uh, bear with me. If I can just bring up my EU indices. Okay. Given the fact that uh, we certainly seem to be US factory data came in in line. ISM came in weaker. So that certainly isn't good news. Uh, Chinese clay, da, 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 nothing else really. ISM data certainly came in weaker. Factory orders came in more or less in line, and that should be sufficient enough for the uh, the market certainly to potentially move higher based on that QE talk. Okay, so <clears throat> bring up the chart of the German DAX now, folks. Okay, so German DAX inverted head and shoulders formation, which I've already highlighted. We certainly have broken this downward sloping diagonal trend line. Uh, the, the idea here, or the concept here, is that we're going to go for that potential gap fill above on the back of a potential weakness in uh, the uh, the Euro USD. That's certainly what I'm expecting, especially given the fact that we've had Mr. ECB prior today as well, talking about the uh, uh, additional QE or uh, potential QE that they can do and certainly fighting deflation. Any, any deflationary talk certainly should send the euro lower as well. So bear that in mind. Also, with regards to weaker inflation data as well, even though we weaker inflation data as well, Okay, with regards to weaker inflation data. Okay, so uh, certainly expecting the uh, German DAX to certainly push push higher. Okay, so that's what I'm expecting. Now, bear with me one second once I just... Uh, uh, okay, sorry about that, folks. I'm never going to end up finishing this video. Okay, so German DAX inverted head and shoulders looking for potential gap fill above uh, at this current juncture. Okay, so German DAX certainly looking uh, bullish given the fact that it's currently 1500 and we're looking for a potential move higher okay so we've broken out the downward sloping trend line impressive we pushed higher we're looking for a higher low uh, and then obviously we are looking for a higher high to close those two potential gaps above okay in terms of the german dax so let's bring up the chart of the uh, the french cac now the french cac itself certainly very bearish on the daily chart one could argue that you are looking potentially to move lower to close that gap from my perspective given the fact that u.s markets are certainly strong and showing resilience even though they have moved lower back down to that uh, 32070 zone the European markets certainly need to play catch up here, and you do have two unfilled gaps above, so bear that in mind, okay? With regards to the French cat. Going to the 10 minute chart now, you do have the inverted head and shoulders formation, which certainly remains active, okay? And we are looking to potentially close that gap above. So, all eyes on gap fill, two gaps above, certainly looking for a potential move higher, and retesting previous resistance equals support as well, okay? So, certainly bias indicates higher, and the fact that uh, if we can dip below that 1.14 level on the Euro USD. The FTSE 100, certainly impressive, certainly uh, as you can see here, we certainly are looking weak at this current juncture given the uh, bear flag formation that we have. Uh, given the fact that US markets certainly are showing resilience and showing strength, and given the fact that you've had talk with regards to this Russian situation of uh, of getting the uh, the Saudis back on board, given their comments on Friday, sent the oil prices lower, it certainly has helped put a floor under oil, and that certainly has, has helped the FTSE 100 as well. As you can see, oil is back up to 30 as well, back above 36 when it was below, uh, and up almost touching 35. So, certainly the Iranian news also with regards to uh, situation uh, in terms of Greece, that certainly did send the markets lower initially, uh, and that has been denied by uh, Lagarde um, uh, in terms of uh, a um, uh, the 
Greeks obviously uh, uh, going into bankruptcy and uh, the IMF obviously failing to reach some sort of agreement. Okay, so all those factors put together, you are looking for a potential thrust higher on the back of obviously stronger US indices. Okay, be sure to visit CFDs.com, folks, uh, with regards to your trading needs. They do have a, uh, a very healthy and very generous uh, opening uh, cash bonus offer, so that's something that you should, you should certainly take advantage of. And visit them at www.cfds.com. Goodbye.